Hello, everyone. So uh, while Desmond is setting up, let me uh, introduce ourselves. So my name is, uh, sorry? So a bit of delay, but uh, yeah, my name is Anton, and this is Desmond. We're both developers at Kyber, and we mainly help on integrations with um, other projects. Um, so the person who's doing most of the talking is Desmond for this uh, morning presentation. Um, we did a uh, rock, paper, scissors earlier this morning, and he lost. So he's doing the presentation. <laughs> but I'm doing the workshop later this afternoon. It's at 3.30. And if you are curious on how you can use Kyber in your project, like uh, accessing liquidity, or even like a building a reserve for contributing liquidity, uh, please attend. And I will um, show you the different tools on how uh, you can use the different aspects or tools of Kyber in your project. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, we'll wait for a while for the uh, adapter before we can start with the presentation. Oh, and it's our first time here in India, and we're loving it so far. So yeah, really looking forward to you know trying out the different food and uh, yeah different sites. <laughs> uh, we also have a booth uh, downstairs in the ground floor. Uh, we do have some cool swag, so please visit our booth before the swag rounds out. <laughs> Okay, without further ado, um, please welcome Desmond talking about on chain liquidity. How do I present? Oh, yeah. I forgot how to present for a moment. Okay. Um, hi, testing. One, two, three. So, thank you, Anton, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Hi, uh, my name is Desmond. I'm here to. Uh, it, it's really great to be here in India. Um, first time, like Anton said. So, I'll be talking uh, about on-chain liquidity provision for the decentralized economy. So I suppose the first question I want to ask is, how many of you have heard about Kyber Network? Wow, okay, uh, that, that's, that's really good. That's about like half of y'all. Um, so for the rest of you that don't know about us, um, let me try to briefly explain the problem that we want to solve. So in, on Ethereum, um, with Solidity, with Viper, with smart contracts, you are actually able to create your own token, right? And we've actually actually seen a multitude of uh, tokens that have been created by many different people, right? So, for example, we have uh, Omisego, we have KNC, that's uh, our own token. We have stable coins like Dai, TUSD, USDT, PEX, USDC, SUSD, and USDS, and I, I mean, just go on and on with uh, the USD stable coin. Right, and you also have uh, application-specific uh, tokens like uh, BAT as well. Um, the last I checked on Etherscan, uh, there were about 200 over 200,000 uh, token contracts, and that's just the ERC20 token alone. Right, so it is actually with this like multitude uh, of tokens, you cannot really expect users to swap from one token uh, to another uh, without some kind of platform, right? So that's ex exactly what we try to solve here at Kyber, that we aggregate liquidity to power token swaps in any applications. So for your users, all they will need to do is to integrate, uh, all, all you need to do uh, as you build your application, just integrate with us and your users will be easily able to swap from one token to another. So for example, from Ether uh, to DAI, right? Um, so this is kind of how uh, our structure works we have makers and takers. Uh, in our terminology, makers are liquidity providers. And that would be the highlight of my talk today. Um, but of course, for you all, uh, you, your area will be probably on integrations as well. Right? So what do I mean by integrations? Right? So we reach out to many different kind of um, applications, from e-commerce websites, to wallets, to decentralized applications, and to even end users. Right, so our very basic use case, number one, first of all, it is swapping services. So we have integrated with many different wallets. Um, you have uh, these examples here for reference. Um, and we also have our own in-house serving, uh, in-house swapping service uh, de develop, developed by our own uh, developers. It's called KyberSwap. So we have a booth downstairs. Do come and find us and uh, give it a try. Right, we have uh, promo cards to give away. 
Um, second use case it is for payments. So for example, let's say you are building an e-commerce website and you want people to be able to purchase your products using cryptocurrencies, right? So then for, um, we have integrated with uh, a few different uh, products, uh, projects. For example, AdCon, where you could purchase uh, the conference tickets using any cryptocurrency that you hold. Uh, but of course, we are only specific to Ethereum for now, and uh, we have slowly expanded to EOS as well. Um, yeah, we are, the second example here that I use is uh, CryptoCup, where you know they also they are, they are a decentralized application. They are also able to accept uh, payments in any cryptocurrency, right? And of course, uh, the third kind of broad category that we look at is financial applications, DeFi, right? So over here, I give two examples. The first is Nuo. It is a margin trading protocol that uh, have integrated with us. And using us, they are able to kind of allow users to leverage right, and to have uh, margin trading. The second example here is Set Protocol, uh, where they allow for ba different baskets of tokens. And they create products out of them. Um, and they use us for rebalancing purposes, to rebalance between one token to another. right? Um, of course, this is just a brief uh, ecosystem map of the different applications that we have uh, integrated with. Right. So, uh, do as Anton has mentioned, later we have a workshop at 3.30. Um, do check it out. Um, I think the most important lesson that uh, we have realized is that for decentralized applications, they need liquidity on-chain immediately. You need it there and then. And for, in order for that to happen, really we have to work with uh, different providers. And there are, there are many different like, resource types that we have. Um, so so the, really the question is, how do we provide liquidity on chain, right? Um, so we have different reserve types. Um, so different reserves could offer different token pairs. For example, the first reserve you see, it offers like the DAI token and maker token. Another reserve could be offering KNC and BAT tokens. All these are quoted against uh, ETH. And so today, I'd like to talk, briefly run through with you the different reserve types uh, that we have. First of all, it is called the Fed Price Reserve. Um, this is uh, how it works is that it has an off-chain component and an on-chain component. So the on-chain component are smart contracts. One is to hold the inventory, the tokens you know, inventory. That's the Kyber Reserve uh, smart contract. The second is the pricing contract. That is our conversion rates uh, contract over there. Right? And, and the third is sanity rates. It's kind of like uh, kind of just to make sure that the rates that are being set uh, doesn't exceed certain thresholds. Right? So uh, this off-chain component, what it does is it pulls feeds from your centralized exchanges, uh, pulls feed from uh, data that cannot, that isn't found on the blockchain, right? And uh, this uh, off-chain component then sets the rates and uh, sets the rates in conversion rates, and it also uh, does like balancing in terms of the inventory in the reserve contract, right? So the greatest benefit for this reserve type is that it it, it offers the greatest flexibility and customization in pr in pricing. Um, the reason for this is that uh, in smart contracts it can be difficult to code your trading strategies. And it, like I said, it's difficult. It can be expensive to put data onto the blockchain, right? And there could be certain trading strategies that are just difficult to code out. Like you don't have native math functions that you might want to use. For example, log, uh, the, the log function, the exponential functions, right? Um, so, that, so if you are able to compute that off-chain, you're able to pull data off, uh, from all these different sources, then you put it on chain. Um, that is kind of what we are offering with this reserve type. And the second benefit here is that the, it, for this reserve type, it's able to set pricing for multiple tokens. As compared to the other reserves, you are only able to set price for one token. So if one reserve can only uh, set price for, can, can only offer rates for one token, uh, that's for other reserves, right? And I think, uh, we've come to notice that this Fed price reserve is best suited for professional market makers who can be really technical and they, they really know what they are doing. Right? And of course, the drawback here is that there is a steep learning curve because you have to, these different components are, you have to take time to understand it. 
and you have to code out your off-chain component. Uh, you have to decide like what kind of APIs you want to pull off-chain, uh, how exactly you want to set your pricing, what kind of trading strategies you want to use so that you can uh, make money, right? Uh, second of all is maintenance costs. Um, you have to periodically put prices on chain. That result, that what that translates to is that you have to periodically make on-chain transactions. And if you notice, it could be rather expensive. If you, that, it, it might seem very small, right? For example, it's just like 0 0.001 ether per transactions. But if let's say you are setting 300, 400 transactions per day, then you stretch that out to a month, to a year, it can add up. So it, it is a drawback that uh, market makers have to take care, to take into consideration. Now, the second uh, reserve type that we offer mainly to project teams is what we call the automated price reserve. What it is, it's kind of how Bancor and Uniswap uh, models work, where the prices will automatically adjust after every trade. All the user, all, all the reserve manager needs to do is to set uh, his set initial parameters, right? Um, so, like I said, he just needs to set the initial parameters and then just leave it to run, um, and it will work like magic. Um, also, there is low maintenance and deployment costs. So, all he needs to do is deploy the reserve contract, deploy uh, the liquidity conversion rates contract, and leave it to run. Um, the drawback here is that you are relying on the pricing mechanism that we created, so you don't really have control over it. It only works for a set price range, as compared to, say, Uniswap that can work for kind of an infinite price range. Uh, here, you will kind of have to define your pricing uh, boundaries. And the third drawback is that it requires a high uh, initial inventory. So there is kind of a high initial capital that you have to start off with. Now, the third uh, reserve type that we have is the order book reserve. It allows anyone to market make by placing limit and buy sell order. So this is your traditional order book uh, reserve that you typically uh, see on, for example, uh, on centralized exchange, exchanges like uh, Binance and Huobi. Right. Um, it is our first permissionless reserve type. What that means is you don't have to come to us to Kyber. Uh, you have to talk to any of us, uh, to either me or Anton. You can just uh, interact directly with the smart contract and your reserve will automatically be listed. Uh, it also allows for the community to contribute liquidity. Instead of it coming from your own pockets, uh, different people are able to interact with the smart contract that you have deployed. They put their liquidity, they state uh, their prices over there. And of course, uh, currently the drawback here is that it is uh, quite cumbersome to use. So that's why we are offering a bounty. If you are able to improve the process, yeah, go ahead. Uh, finally, we have what we call our integrated reserves. So these are viable liquidity pools that have been built by other companies. So let me just quickly give you three examples. First of all, it is Uniswap. Uh, they are pretty popular where you, they are able to just contribute whatever liquidity you have and you put in your money there. It's kind of like passive income. After a while, you take it out and, and your money grows. Yay. Uh, second of all is uh, DutchX. This was built by Gnosis. Uh, and finally, you have uh, If to Die. They, so the if to die is kind of was previously known as the Oasis Dex, right? Um, how we kind of connect with these different projects is what we we just write a what we call a connector or yeah a, a hybrid contract that conforms to this uh, reserve interface that follows that just implements these two functions in uh, the Solidity smart contract. And actually, if you want to build your own reserve type. Um, if you have some ideas on to how you want to contribute liquidity, you really, all, all you really need to do is just to implement this uh, reserve type. So this information is actually available on our developer portal, right? Um, I like to talk about the issues to, uh, I like to move on to talk about issues that you should consider when you're building your decentralized application. So based on what we have been building so far, what we are able to learn, uh, I just want to highlight two uh, key issues. Number one, consider uh, that notice that on-chain storage and computation can be kind of expensive. So consider what kind of data do you really need to put onto the blockchain? You don't have to put everything onto the blockchain uh, as opposed to what some people might think. Um, and really, like in terms of computation, do you, are you able to perform the computation off-chain instead of on-chain? Right? Um, so that's one issue that you want to think about. Are you able to, say, reuse storage slots in your smart contract? instead of having to always uh, reuse uh, to use new ones. Now, the second issue that uh, I like to highlight is transaction speed. 
as you have noticed, um, transactions can take a while to mine. So it, this really kind of translates to a not very nice user experience. Um, so maybe consider the case where you don't really need to interact with, try, try to separate your, um, your application or design your application such that you don't have to interact with the blockchain too much. Or maybe consider doing kind of like batch transactions or back, uh, do your, your actions in, in batches. Um, so finally, I'd like to highlight, do check out our developer portal, developer.kyber.network. We are also offering bounties. Um, so check out the link over there, or you can talk to either me or Anton. And finally, uh, join our Telegram groups. So anyone has any questions? Uh, I take that as no. Okay, so thank you everyone.